Hey everyone, um, for today's week, uh, sorry, for today's lecture this week, uh, I'm going to go over integrating sources and quotes into your paper, okay? Um, you are going to, you are in the process of writing your paper, your final paper, which is essay three, okay? And so, you know, you might be writing something like this, let's say maybe you're writing about Joe Biden, um, and in it you have claims that you're making, okay, uh, statements and thoughts. And so um, I'm just going to show you how to take your paper and start integrating quotes into it, all right? Um, like this is an example of a paper without quotes. This is an example of a paper with a quote, all right? And so um, I'm going to show you how to take thoughts and statements from other work and putting it into yours and how to properly format that okay so i'm gonna go through this powerpoint that i have posted as well i'm gonna go through it and then i'm gonna show you the examples so here we go um display setting there we go let's see okay what, why, and how? Integrating sources. So this paper, this paper integrate quotes into it and sources. And then when you take 1102 next year, I'm sorry, next semester, which you can take with me, because um, I teach that as well, um, you'll be integrate uh, sources and quotes into every paper that you write. All right, so first we have to understand plagiarism. Um, Plagiarism is when you take direct quotes from other sources um, and you do not cite them. You don't credit them. You don't say, hey, this is someone else's idea. Okay. Um, you take someone else's words um, or ideas. So if you like copy words from somewhere else without giving credit, without putting it into quotation marks, without saying this came from this writer or this came from this article. Okay. Um, if you um, are not uh, citing your sources, then it's considered plagiarism, which is why we go through turnitin.com and it checks how much of your paper is quoted from other sources. Okay. Also, plagiarism is if you turn in work um, that someone else has produced. If you use someone else's paper, that's plagiarism. If you use quotes from, there's a bug. If you use quotes from other people's work, then um, without citing them, that is plagiarism. And any paper that's ever been submitted through turnitin.com in the whole entire country, I'm sorry, the world, if a paper has been turned in in Europe uh, and that same paper gets turned in in Georgia, it gets flagged and stated, okay? So there, should be zero copying of anybody's words if you, uh, you are not citing it, which is what I'm about to go over to explain to you what citing means. Okay. All right, we're gonna. It'll be nice if you read if you if you read this on your own. Uh, I'm not gonna necessarily highlight that. Let's see. Okay. So we're going to focus on what is quoting and paraphrasing. Okay, so when you are writing an argumentative persuasive piece, you need to have sources to kind of back yourself up, to prove your point, okay? And you can either directly quote from these sources or you can do what's paraphrasing, which is summarizing it into your own words but still is saying that you got that you get these ideas from someone else so quoting is using the direct language from another person either in full sentences or groups of words and putting the borrowed language between quotation marks paraphrasing is putting the ideas or arguments of another person entirely in your own words okay um you don't always have to use quotes. Sometimes you can use paraphrasing um, because it, if you use just quotes, it might get repetitive. 
But if you use just paraphrasing uh, and no quotes, then people might question the um, authority of what you're saying. So it's nice to have a little bit of both. Use quotations when the original language is as important as the idea it contains. Or if you're saying something that seems skeptical or that some people might feel like is like, uh, like there's no way they really said that, then you should definitely use a quote to prove the point that like, yes, you're not misinterpreting this information. This is exactly what the person said. Okay. Um, and sometimes the quote just says it better. We can't paraphrase it in a way that's, that's any better than what the quote says. Okay. All right. Um, when you quote, you want to enclose all the borrowed language between quotation marks, then provide an in-text citation that cites the source. All right, when you are paraphrasing, you are deciding that an author's ideas, um, but not his or her exact words, are important to your point. A paraphrase should not change the ideas, but it can eliminate or change words, often in order to condense a long sentence or paragraph or chapter or article okay so like um, here is the this is a quote from um, this article by Thomas Bender the solidarity that characterizes communities does not mean however that all is unity and harmony within within many commentators uh, I think by insisting that absence or co of conflict like the family conflict we all know is real, though it differs from, say, market competition, is being mediated by emotional bonds. Okay, that's kind of lengthy. We might not need all of that, that whole sentence. You might not want to include that in your paper. So instead, you would say, say something like, according to Bender, the solidarity that characterizes communities does not mean, however, that all is unity and harmony within. So that just takes the first sentence, not all of it, okay? Um, and you see how there there's are quotation marks with the for the and the end with within. Paraphrase. While some people believe a lack of conflict character, characterizes community, Bender asserts that some communities may have and need conflict. Those are not the exact words of, of Bender. It's just paraphrase. So there is no um citation okay so in order to use a quote you have to integrate the quote you can't just have a quote by itself okay you have to connect the quote to something that you're already written like that you're already writing in the same paragraph i'm sorry in the same sentence not just the same paragraph okay um so first off you don't ever produce what are called drop quotes okay a drop quote is a quote from someone else that is placed in your writing but it never stands alone and is not introduced and not integrated into a sentence of your own it's like you've written and then you just drop in a quote and that is incorrect okay you have to integrate it so look here we go here's an example of a drop quote A number of journalists have been critical of genetic engineering, period, quotation mark. The problem is no one really knows the long effects of such complex genetic manipulation and the potential dangers, the potential dangers to humans and the environment are substantial. Quotation mark, period. That is a drop quote. We have two sentences. One is the sentence that the writer wrote, and then one total sentence is just the quote. Okay? So this is a drop quote. We cannot have that. All right? It's like a balloon with no string. Okay? So instead, we, to, we must integrate it. A number of journalists have been critical of genetic engineering. Lisa Turner, in an article for the magazine Better Nutrition, targets the unpredictable nature of this new technology and then we have a colon you can introduce a, a quote by using a colon if you want to that's just one of the ways in which you can introduce a quote 
I'm going to show you some other ways. Yep, blah, blah. All right. So here are a few approaches for creating introductory phrases for quotes. Identify the speaker in context of the quote. So, for example, D protests to her mother that her sister does not know the true value of the quilts. And then we have Maggie can't appreciate these quilts. She'd probably be backward enough to put them into everyday use. Okay. So we can lead into it with a, with a sentence going into it and a comma. We can have, we, number two deal, has another example with a semicolon. We can, we can um, introduce a quote with a semicolon. Okay. Um, also, let's see, I want to jump down to, we have, we have an intro phrase like this. And I know why the cage bird sings. My Angela writes. And then we have the quote. Okay, you can always uh, just start off with a signal phrase. The author says, the author writes, the author argues. Hey, see. Ooh, excuse me. All of these are appropriate ways that you can um, introduce a quote. Okay, the author, uh, Martin Luther, adds, and then you have a quotation. Um, thinks, observes, points out, reasons, grants. These are all verbs that lead straight into the quotes. So you have to have some sort of intro phrase leading into the quote. You cannot have a period and then a quote. Okay? Absolutely wrong. Okay. Uh, hmm. Right. So, um, you know, this sandwich is the same thing, kind of like uh, Tolman. You introduce it, and then you provide the quote, and then you discuss it. Discuss it. It makes me hungry. All right. Um, let's see. Yeah. So, look, we have here, this, this is our paragraph. In the autobiographical work, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, the author's experience with education sharpens his views on the depravity of slavery, both for the slave and his master. There's our, our claim. One of his masters begins to teach him how to read it, and at first, Douglass finds her to be a... And then we have this, quote, kind and tender-hearted woman. Do you see how uh, Douglass's actual words are integrated directly into the sentence? that this writer is creating okay so of both quotes and he completes his thought however their slave master relationship soon disintegrates he writes we have our signal phrase he writes comma quotation mark slavery proved as an, as injurious to her as it did to me the first step in her downward course was in her ceasing to instruct me blah 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 quotation mark the page number in which this was found, which most of you are going to be are, are going to be quoting uh, uh, internet sources, so they won't be page numbers. And then period. Okay, the quotes are integrated into the sentences, and they support the sentences. It gives the writing validity, um, and uh, and you know it's done correctly, where it's not just dropped in there. So it's done accurately. All right, so punctuating quotes, okay? Um, punctuating quotes is kind of difficult, all right? Um, especially when it comes to uh, citations, all right? If you are citing the source, if, if you have to say who said the, the, the quote, and if you don't give the person's name in this sentence, like if you don't say, hey, writer James Barkley from the New York Times said this, if you just have the quote, then you, um, after the last quotation mark, you have a parenthesis, you have the author's last name. If there's a page number provided for that quote, then you get the page number. If it's just on a web page, there is no page number. So you just have parentheses, the author's last name, and then another parentheses, and then period. Okay, um, 
if you mention the author's name in the sentence, then you don't need to include them. You just need to have quotation mark. But in that case, though, as you'll see, you'll have the periods go inside quotation marks. So let's talk about punctuating. So we got to use quotation marks, okay? And uh, all punctuation goes inside of quotation marks. So there's a comma, there's a period, there's a semicolon, there's a colon. It goes inside of the quotation mark. Um, so see here, commas and periods go inside the quotation marks, okay? Um, you have quotation mark, and then you have a comma and quotation mark, okay? If there is a parenthetical citation, like the author's last name, then that goes on the outside of the quotation mark. It's quotation mark, parenthetical, citation, and then period. Um, semicolons and colons go outside of quotation marks. Uh, question marks and exclamation points go inside quotation marks. Okay, so these are just little things that you need to pay, att to pay attention to. All right. Um, let's see. A quote within a quote. <laughs> so if you have a quote within a quote, you have a you have the double the double quotation mark, and then in the quote that's inside of the quote is a single quotation mark, single, single. And then when the whole statement is, is finished, then you have a double quotation mark. So a quote within a quote. The quote within the quote has a single quotation mark, and then the double quotation mark is for the entire quote. Okay, um, sometimes you will want to leave out material in the middle of a passage, quoting the most important words. When you do this, use an ellipses, okay? So if, if, you're, if you're quoting, if you're leaving out some information, some, some of the words in between two quoted sentences, then you just have an ellipses. Some of this seems really confusing, which is why I do also, after you write your paper, I suggest you signing up, making an appointment with the, uh, with the online, uh, no, with the LCS, the Learning Center, the Learning Support Center. That's what that's what it is. Learning Support Center will help you also with your punctuation. All right. Um, if you are referring to the title of an article, you need to have it in quotation marks. If you are referencing a book, it's italics. If you're referencing a novel, it's italics. If you're referencing, if if you are stating the actual newspaper or the magazine, it's in italics. If you're talking about the the actual article's name, then it's in quotation marks. All right. Um, I'm not going to go into that uh, even yourself, but I'm going to show you these two examples though. Okay, of integrating quotes. So this is the same essay. And so when I read through your essay, I'm going to look for moments where I think that you could use some sources, okay? So we're reading this essay about, about Biden, okay? And we get to the line, following the August Declaration. Uh, oh, wait, this is the wrong, uh, oops, hold on, that's the wrong one. Examples, oh, without quotes, here it is. All right. Um, following the, so the original said this, following the August declaration of Joe Biden as the official Democratic candidate, many reasons make him an outstanding candidate. During his campaign announcement, Joe Biden admitted that the American values and democracy are at stake, a statement that made me rethink the current status of America and the political standings of Joe Biden amid his 
this economic crisis. Okay, so this would be, you know, they're talking about like what he admits in this uh, announcement. So to me, I'm like, why not just have an actual quote from the announcement? It makes it that much more authentic. So I went and I found uh, the actual um, announcement and I, re and I added a quote. During his, his campaign announcement, Joe Biden states that the core values of this nation, our standing in the world, our very democracy, everything that has made America, America is at stake. Um, a statement that made me rethink the current status of America, which is all right. I include this Burns right here is the person who transcribed his announcement. So look, so I works at a page. Alexander Burns, Joe Biden's campaign announcement video annotated. I read this, and uh, Alexander Burns is one who took his speech and typed it up. So that's why I put his name right here, because this, this is his article. All right, I have Joe Biden states that, and then I have the quotation mark, and then I have what he said. And then I have a comma, quotation mark, and then I have the parenthetical citation, Burns. So um, adding this just gives it a little bit more detail and makes it more specific. Okay, next paragraph down. It's about the, the Affordable Care Act. Okay, um, we have uh, when the Trump administration challenged the Affordable Care Act, Biden went ahead and defended it, terming it the best deal for Americans. In his article posted to Washington Post, Biden wrote that the Affordable Care Act might not be perfect. Still, its ideology was based on providing the best healthcare services across American society. On his campaign website, Joe promises to leverage the Affordable Care Act by blah, blah, blah. Okay, there's a lot of summary. Once again, though, it can make your reader question, is that really what he says? Is that really what he thinks? So if you look over here, I went and actually found the article, and I got a quote from it. In his article posted to Washington Post, Biden writes, the Affordable Care Act isn't perfect. But the choices we made when designing the law flowed from a commitment to provide the best possible care to the most people. In spite of this, on his campaign website, Joe Biden promises to leverage the Affordable Care Act. Okay, so this quote isn't really any different um, than this. It's just that now we actually see Biden's actual words rather than getting just a summary of it. And so that's what I did. I, I read the paragraph and I thought, okay, you know what would be better if I actually had a quote here. So then I went and found a quote to integrate it. Oops. And there, there are no drop quotes. Here we have this sentence. This includes plans to pass the National Domestic Workers Bill of Rights. And as Maddie Kahn writes in Glamour Magazine, Biden, then we have a quotation mark, advocates to pass the Equal Rights Amendment. Use federal funds to invest in women-owned businesses, make public colleges and universities tuition-free for all families with incomes below $125,000, expand benefits for jobs that women tend to fill, and support the Paycheck Fairness Act, which takes aim at the gender wage gap, period. Okay, I added that quote to make this paragraph better. So, like, this paragraph right here, like any other economic issue, women's issues have become... This paragraph was originally 137 words. By me going and finding a quote and still having the rest of that there, I've now made it 183 words. Okay, it adds a link, it, adds, um, uh, it pushes it forward, and it makes it far more um, trustworthy by having an actual quote from a writer. Okay, so that's all you're doing. Okay, you're you are if you if you've written your rough draft, great. Go back in and find places to add quotes. You should have a quote almost in almost almost every paragraph, or it can be summarized. Okay. All right. Next week I'm gonna go over what you do with those quotes in terms of uh, making a work a work cited page. I'm gonna go over how to make this part of your essay, the works cited page, and how to properly format that. But that'll be it for next week. This week, you should really be focusing on integrating quotes into your paper. Okay? All right, y'all. Email me if you have any questions.
Okay. Bye-bye. Maybe.